A clearer picture is emerging tonight of the man arrested by the FBI last night in Chicago, a man wanted by both Canadian and American authorities. And in this CBC Investigative Unit report, Terry Molewski has more information on other suspects who have authorities concerned. Terry. Peter, the FBI last night arrested a man called Nabil Al Murab, age 35. CBC News has obtained his immigration file, and it's quite a story. He was born to Syrian parents in Kuwait and was refused refugee status in Canada in 1994. But then he went underground and managed to live and work illegally for seven years in both Toronto and Boston. Al Mirab has a Boston cab driver's ID and he's wanted for an assault in Boston in May of last year. But this June, he was caught hiding in the back of a truck trying to get into the U.S. at Niagara Falls. He was charged in Canada with carrying a false Canadian passport and detained for two weeks, but then released. Al Mirab was run by the Boston, Massachusetts Police Department. As the FBI announced Al Mirab's arrest, those who knew him in Toronto seemed stunned. They said he'd occasionally stayed here and at his uncle's apartment in an inner-city Toronto neighborhood and helped out sometimes at this downtown copy store run by his uncle. The tenants now are coming to my door today. They're very scared. They think that now is somebody going to retaliate against us building. Now, we also have new details tonight on two other Toronto residents. We reported on Tuesday that two Egyptian men are being held in Toronto because CSIS alleges they are members of what it calls an Islamic terrorist organization, the Vanguards of Conquest. That's a radical wing of al-Jihad, holy war. All of that emerges from court records in a 1999 case involving Mahmoud Jabala, a father of six who's being held in solitary confinement in Toronto. According to Jabala's testimony, he's a devout Islamic teacher, but with a curious history. He says he was persecuted in his native Egypt and arrested there seven times, then fled to Saudi Arabia on a pilgrimage, then to Pakistan, then to Yemen on a false Iraqi passport. Jabala testified, I thought to leave Pakistan with a false passport and I traveled from there to Yemen. Question, with a false passport, did you say? Jabala, yes. Question, from what country? Jabala, Iraq. Finally, in May of 96, Jabala came to Canada on a false Saudi passport. He sought and won refugee status, saying he'd worked in Pakistan for an Islamic relief organization. But, CSIS told the court, that organization is run by a man named Ayman Zawahiri, who is on the FBI's terrorism watch list. Israeli intelligence says Zawahiri is a link between Iraqi intelligence and Osama bin Laden's al-Qaeda organization. But Jabala's lawyer says all of this is unproven and that his client has spent months in solitary without even seeing the evidence against him. I was embarrassed to be a lawyer in this country to hear the basis of those allegations which, uh, which uh, were nothing short of thin air. That being said, shouldn't CSIS be concerned and suspicious about people traveling around the world like Mr. Jabala by his own account on false Iraqi passports, false Saudi passports? Isn't that exactly what CSIS should be watching for? Well, CSIS has to do its job. However, I, I cannot accept a process by which a person is accused of something he does not know the accusation. I cannot accept a process where the evidence is not shown to the person. Galati says the same goes for another Toronto man named Mohamed Majoub, who's been in solitary since June of 2000, accused of being what CSIS calls a high-ranking member of al-Jihad. Both men were arrested long before September the 11th under certificates signed by two federal cabinet ministers saying the evidence is secret for reasons of national security. A government spokesman said only we don't detain people lightly. Peter. All right, Terry. Thank you. Terry Malofsky here in Toronto.